Certain postsets have been creeping into our computations in the form of path postsets, where we define one path in a star network to be less than another path if it lies entirely below the other path with no intersection. It turns out that if our star network is a descending star network, then that postset is a unit interval order. So recall, we said that descending star networks correspond to 3, 1, 2 avoiding permutations. And we didn't actually prove this, but it's true. So it follows that the number of these is the Catalan number, 1 over n plus 1, 2 n choose n. Also, the number of unit interval orders, postsets that avoid 3 plus 1 and 2 plus 2 on n elements, is also a Catalan number. Now these postsets, the unit interval orders, are the ones that can be labeled one through n. Well, unit interval orders on n elements can be labeled one through n. So that the anti-adjacency matrix let's say A whose entries are AIJ defined by AIJ equals 0 if I is less than J in the post set and 1 otherwise sort of the opposite of what you would expect, which is why it's called anti-adjacency matrix, has the form so we've got a shape of, of zeros in the upper left, which is basically a, a Ferris diagram of zeros, and then ones below this, this lattice path dividing the the zeros from the ones, and the fact that these that this lattice path always stays at or above the diagonal is exactly how we showed that the number of these is a, is a Catalan number. Another way to describe this form is to say that if AIJ equals 1, then every entry southwest of this is also 1. Or equivalently, if some entry is 0, then every entry northeast of that is also 0. Now I claim that for W avoiding the pattern 3, 1, 2 with descending star network FW the post set P of FW is a unit interval order.
So to prove this, let's define a variation on the path matrix. Let's call it a modified path matrix. B with entries B, I, J by letting the entry B, I, J be one One, if there's a path from SI to TJ in the network, or if J is less than or equal to I. Well, there's always a path from I to I, so or if J is less than I. and zero otherwise. So the normal path matrix would say we'd have one if there's a path from SI to TJ in, in the network, period. But now we're adding or if J is less than I. So this makes all of the entries less, all the entries below the diagonal equal to one. And the otherwise, well, let's just flesh out the otherwise. So we could only have, we could only be the otherwise case if i is less than j and there is no path si to tj in the planar network fw. So let me do an example just so you can picture what I'm doing here. Let's let W be the permutation 3, 4, 2, 1, 6, 5. The descending star network has this form. We've got a star up here and then two three stars that shared two paths between them but then those two paths get smushed here we go one two three four five. Oh, I wanted to have this completely disjoint let me draw this again A star here and then not touching it two more stars like this so to find this matrix B that has ones on the diagonal and everywhere below the diagonal And then we have a one above the diagonal if there is a path from SI to TJ. So we have paths from one to one, two, and three, two to one, two, three, and four, three to the same paths as two, and four to the same paths as two, and then from five to five and six, and from six to five and six. So that gives us zeros in those positions. Now this matrix has that form where the the division line between the ones and the zeros is a lattice path. It has this form.
All right, so that's just an example. Now let's observe that if there's a path from source I to sink J in any descending star network FW, then there are also paths from SI to all the sinks TI through TJ and all the sources SI through SJ to TJ. So if we pick say I and, and J here Oh, that's not a good choice because there's no path from, from 1 to 4. So let me pick 3 on both sides. Alright, so if there's a path from 1 to 3, then there have to be paths. Well, we know there's a path from 1 to 1 because in any planar network, any descending star network, there's always one path family of type E. So if there's a path from 1 to 1 and 1 to 3, there have to be paths from 1 to everything in between there. Similarly, if there's a path from 1 to 3 and a path from 3 to 3, then there have to be paths from every source in between these two to that one. So in other words, if bij equals 1, then I get to use the other sentence that I had there already, then every entry southwest of this is also 1. So our matrix, this modified path matrix, does have that special 1, 0, lattice path property. So that means that if any post set has anti-adjacency matrix B, then it must be a unit interval order. Now let's consider the post set P of FW. We get by saying one path is less than another path if it's entirely below, no intersection. And let's consider its anti-adjacency matrix. Let's say that anti-adjacency matrix is A. So A is going to have one and zero matrices. matrices. So we have Maybe instead of writing it this way,
So we have I lesson J in this post set. That is AIJ equals zero. If this path is entirely below that path, so if I is less than J and there is no path in the descending star network from SI to TJ. Now, if there were a path from SI to TJ, in the ascending star network, then the unique paths pi i from si to ti and pi j from sj to tj would touch each other. So we have i less than j only if, if these two paths don't touch each other. Therefore, there can't be a path from source i to sink j in the descending star network. And we have aij equals one otherwise. Now I erase the definition of B, but, but this is exactly how B is defined. So since P of FW is a post set that has B as its anti-adjacency matrix, that means that this post set is a unit interval order. So we just proved that if W avoids 3, 1, 2, then the path post set of FW is a unit interval order. Now it's also true that if we have a unit interval order, Let's let P be a unit interval order. On N elements. And it turns out that P has to be the path post set of a descending star network corresponding to a 312 avoiding permutation W. And I think I'm going to leave that part of the proof for homework. And in the next lesson, I'm going to give you a PDF file of a, the correspondence between descending star networks and, and post-sets so you can see them side by side. The end.